All right, I'm John with Chance. Uh, I'm here to show you how a pneumatic circuit works with a semi-rotational actuator. Over in the corner, we have our air source as a compressor. Uh, it feeds the air lines over here to our um, pressure reducing valve. This particular pre pressure reducing valve also contains a pressure gauge and the uh, check valve. Uh, merely just spin the handle, raise your pressures up and down as needed. The way the uh, check valve works in here is if pressure is too high down uh, in the circuit, it will actually trip the, uh, the check valve in here versus any time before the, uh, the flow control, or I'm sorry, the pressure reducing valve. We have it set to 10 PSI, comes down here, feeds our valve. This is a directional control valve. You see the air comes in, there are mufflers on here. And then uh, the two lines coming out of the directional control valve feed our flow controls. Now it splits off flow control for each circuit going into our actuator. Simply you just adjust the knobs and you can control how fast or how much pressure is actually reaching the actuator. We have our lines going in, coming back out, and they feed back into our control or our directional control valve and exhaust out through the mufflers. So you can see, when you press the button, it actuates semi-rotational, has a limited range of motion. And I believe that is about it. There were, typically you will have within the flow control valves, you will have uh, some sort of uh, one-way valve, check ball, um, to relieve pressure, um, as well as the, the check valve within the pressure reducing valve. All in all, that about sums up a uh, basic pneumatic circuit. And then, uh, I think we'll turn you uh, over to Chance. All right. How are you doing? My name is Chance. And as John explained to you, we have our semi actually heating cylinder. <laughs> So we decided to do this to figure out what the torque is on this. In order to figure out torque, we need a few other things like area. We need to know our area. We need to know our pressure. So area, as we know, is calculated by dividing pi divided by 4, multiplying that by the bore diameter squared. So what is the bore diameter? So this is where it gets interesting because we were, we were not able to go online. We did. We went online to find the specifications for this model and we were unsuccessful. So, we actually ended up tearing part, part of the one side of the cylinder and measured the, the bore diameter with a set of calipers and came up with a bore diameter of 0.78. So, just over three quarters of an inch. So, if we do the numbers here, 0.78 multiplied by itself, to make it squared, and multiply that by 0.7854, we come up with an area of 0.478 cubic inches. Okay, so since we know our area, we can write that down if I had a pen. <laughs> that just out. Hold on one second. All right, welcome back, Chance. Hmm? Welcome back, Pete. All right, so what we got? Oh, all right, so we know what area is equal to diameter squared multiplied by 0.7584. So we know what our diameter is, was 0 0.780 squared four. So we came up with an answer of 4.78 inches cubed. Okay, that takes care of our area for our piston. Now in order, in order for us to come up with torque, torque equals force times area. But in, in order to equal, figure out what force is, force is area times pressure. 
So pressure is at 10 PSI and our area is, like I said, 4.78. Okay, so multiply that together, we'll get an answer of 4.78 pounds of force. Okay, so since we know the force, we know the area. Now the cool thing about uh, torque, well actually this little guy is, most of it's done with, it's a rack and pinion cylinder, and you take the whole thing apart. Um, so you have a rack, forgive my little jaws teeth here, I'm not very good at drawing out teeth. Okay, here's our end of our piston. All right, and here's our, uh, let's see if I can do this right, just so you guys can understand what's going on here. Here's a little pinion, not minion, pinion, okay? Here's the center of it. So, we have a force going this way of 4.78 pounds, okay? All right, so as this moves forward, it's gonna hit this radius, or lever arm, if you will, at a perpendicular angle, and gonna create a torque. Now, in order to do that, we need torque, as we said, equals force times the radius, or lever arm. Okay, so a force is 4.78 times our radius. We came up with a, uh, a radius of 0.25, 250 thousandths, which equals, you do that, comes up to 1.195 inch pounds of torque. Okay, so the really cool thing about this whole cylinder is that all this, all this stuff happens, all the force and the torque is created, is created by one little tooth on the rack and one little tooth on a pinion. And all that you see here as it moved was just done by two teeth, one on the pinion, one on the rack. So there you have our semi-actual aiding, semi-rotating actuator. Thank you. Oh, by the way, if you really want to uh, convert the inch pounds of torque into foot pounds, just divide your inch pounds by 12, which you come up. Do this right. Divide it by 12, and you have oops, torque is also foot pounds of torque. There. Can you explain how much torque that little guy's going to be beating out? All right, so this is our video. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please talk to John. Thank you.